Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 45th President of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A., where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. So, where else would you like to be but a Trump rally, right? Watch that. Hello, Colorado. We love Colorado, most beautiful place. And I'm thrilled to be back in Colorado Springs. I've spent a lot of time here over the years. Beautiful place beneath the majestic peaks, that's true of the Rocky Mountains with thousands of terrific, hardworking, great American patriots. With your help this November, we are going to defeat the radical Democrats. And we are going to win Colorado in a landslide. And you're going to help us get Corey Gardner across that line because he's been with us 100%. There was no waiver. He's been with us. There was no waiver with Corey. We appreciate it. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. This month, we mark a very special anniversary. 75 years ago this week, our brave United States Marines landed on the shores of Iwo Jima and began one of the bloodiest battles of the Second World War. It was a rough one tonight. It's our great privilege to be joined by three of the heroes of the Battle of Iwo Jima, James Blaine, Donald Whipple, and John Thurman.
Great, great patriots, very brave people. And tonight, we also honor the life and extraordinary, really, of a very extraordinary American hero, one of the last known survivors of the attack on the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. He was in the Oval Office just recently, a little while ago, about a year and a half ago, and we just want to pay our respects, okay? You know who it is? Donald Stratton, well-known guy, just passed away. Sadly, sadly, he passed away just a few days ago. He was going to be here. Passed away a few days ago, but he was great. I have a beautiful picture of him right outside, and we're going to honor him and his family. Great, great gentlemen. So we were going to have four. We have three, and we want to thank you for being here. Thank you all. Thank you. Because America is truly a land of heroes. On behalf of the grateful nation, I would like to recognize the many veterans of the Vietnam War and the Iraq and Afghanistan wars who are here this evening. Got a lot of them. Brave people, great people. This is a truly incredible time for America. We have the best economy in our history the most prosperity of any country. We are doing better than any country in the world, and it's not even close. And we've rebuilt our military over the last three years. Don't tell anybody, but we spent two and a half trillion dollars. But when it comes to our military and our safety and our security, we don't worry about budgets, right? We don't worry about budgets. We had to rebuild it. It was depleted. It was in bad shape. It was old. It was tired. We have the best people in the world, but that old equipment, now we have brand new jets. We have brand new missiles and rockets. We have everything. All made in the USA. In my State of the Union address, I proudly declared that we are in the midst of the great American comeback. That's what we're doing. Our country is stronger today than ever before. After three years of ridiculous witch hunts and scams and partisan Democrat crusades, the radical left's attempt to poison our democracy and overturn the last election have totally failed. They have been a complete flop, and we today have the highest poll numbers we've ever had. Today just came out. And I don't know if anybody watched last night's debate. It got very big ratings. And you know what? Mini Mike didn't do well last night. I was going to send him a note saying, it's not easy doing what I do, is it? Not easy. It's not easy, Mike. Not easy for any of them. Now, Mike didn't do too well. He went way down. It's all right. Mini Mike. How about Klobuchar? Did you see her? She choked. She choked. She choked. She couldn't breathe. Alfred E. Newman looked at her and said something slightly derogatory. And she said, are you accusing me of being dumb? Who would make a statement like that? Because that's really what he was doing, but he doesn't want to say that. No, no, how about that? Are you saying I'm dumb? That was the end of her campaign in my book, you know. You don't say that. Even if it's true, you don't say that. Huh? 
You know, they had a, a crazy person on today on one of the Fox shows. I tell you, Fox doesn't treat us the way they used to. But we have the great Sean Hannity, we do. And we have Laura. And Tucker. And we have, in the morning, Fox and Friends, Steve and Angel. And Brian's gotten much better. He's moving up. And we have the great Lou Dobbs. Lou Dobbs says he's the greatest president ever. The great Lou Dobbs, he says, Lou Dobbs, a year and a half, two years ago, he said he's the greatest since Reagan. Then he said, about six months ago, he's better than Reagan. And then he said a few nights ago, he's the greatest we've ever had. I said, I said, does that include Lincoln and George Washington? He said, that includes them all. That's Lou Dobbs, the great Lou Dobbs. And you've got Hegseth, and you've got uh, Jesse Waters. How about Jesse? And Judge Janine. And even Greg got fun. You know, Greg, Greg hated us, right? But now he says, look, whether I like him or not, he gets it done. It's all about getting it done. Right? We're getting it done. Nobody's ever done what we've done. No, but Fox says it. I don't know. It's different. It was different. In the old days, it was better for us. It was better for us. But it's okay. We'll win anyway. We'll win anyway. No, but they had this woman on, Neil Cavuto doesn't treat us good, Neil Cavuto. He's not too good. She said, I don't like him. Nobody likes him. He's right now, so you had, you know, remember last in the ratings? You remember who was last in the ratings? He got fired, right? You remember? Right? Remember? He's gone. And now Neil's taking his place. Neil's actually a nice guy, but you know, he doesn't like Trump too much. And he put this woman on today, and she said, Donald Trump didn't do well in the debates, and he won because she was referring to Mike Bloomberg, sometimes referred to as Mini Mike. Mini Mike. And I said, wait a minute, I won every debate, it's true. And we sent them polls, poll after poll after poll. Not only won them, but won them by a lot. I won every debate. I'm not saying, I'm just saying every poll, you know, they do those polls right after three, four, five hundred thousand people, Time Magazine. I said, nobody's allowed to do that. You can't do that. We're at enough of a disadvantage with the fake news. You know, they make up 90% of the story. So where is Dan Scavino? Where's Scavino? Does anyone know who Dan Scavino is? Dan, bring me those pages up here. Bring those pages up. See if you can get them. Go get them. Just, it's such fake news. It's so disgusting. You know what? They do better if they told the truth. Do you agree? They do better. Oh, someday in 10, 14, 18, 22 years when I'm gone, when we leave office in 26 years or so, they're going to miss us. They're going to miss us. You know, I told the story that a month before I ran, 2016, I was thinking about it. I said to my wife, who's become a great first lady. People love her. You know, they said it's one of the greatest fields ever assembled. And I said, what the hell should I run for if they are so great? But I remember holding up the New York Times, and it was like a leaflet that you give at a certain, like a supermarket, right? It's like, you know, the thing was blowing in the way. It had no, it was dead. And now it's successful again. But when we leave, it's all of us. We leave together. We're unified. This is the most unified the Republican Party has ever been. And when we leave, the New York Times, thank you, the great Dan Scavino, most powerful man in politics. Hey, Dan. So Zuckerberg left. Who is number one in the world on Facebook? And I'm saying this in front of the fake news because if I'm wrong, they're going to report me, right? Who is number one in the world on Facebook? He walked in, but that's us. He walked in for, we had dinner 
recently just because I want them to pay taxes. I want to find out what's going on. But he walked in, he's smart, and he said, I just want to congratulate you. Small dinner, a few people. He said, you're number one in the world in Facebook. I said, that's nice. I said, who's number two? He said, Prime Minister Modi of India. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's got 1.5 billion people, and we have 350. So he should be number one. But we're never going to give up that position of number one in the world for our country, for Facebook, for Twitter, for anything. And they still haven't figured it out. They have not figured it out. But look at all that press. Look at all that press. By the way, how bad were the Academy Awards this year? Did you see it? And the winner is a movie from South Korea. What the hell was that all about? We got enough problems with South Korea, with trade. On top of it, they give them the best movie of the year. Was it good? I don't know. You know, I'm looking for like, where, where, let's get Gone with the Wind. Can we get like Gone with the Wind back, please? Sunset Boulevard. So many great movies. The winner is from South Korea. I thought it was best foreign film, huh? Best foreign movie. No, it was the button. Did this ever happen before? And then you have Brad Pitt. I was never a big fan of his. He got up and said, little wise guy statement. Little wise guy. He's a little wise guy. Anyway, but we're doing well. But here, I'll just show this real quick, right? So this horrible journalist, she's a real, you know, she's a Trump hater. She gets, you know what she's worth? Zero ratings. Nobody watches her. But she said, she was trying, look, Bloomberg made a fool out of himself last night. He choked. He's another one. He's going, oh, 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 I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Don't ask me the question, please. I look at my wife. I said, let's send him a little note. It's not so easy up there to do what I did, right? Not so easy. But this woman who's a third rate, fourth rate, she's been with everybody. Every year she's like with a different group, but I won't use her name because we'll make her too famous. It actually plays to their advantage, but she's third rate. And she's on the lowest rated show on Fox, Milk Cavuto. So he liked, that's why. So she said, Donald Trump didn't get good ratings. He didn't do well in the polls. He said he didn't do well in the debates. She said that we were defeated in the debates. Well, I defeated crooked Hillary every time. And by a lot. So what? So. Yeah, she's crooked as a $3 bill. You know, I was going, whatever happened to the 33,000 emails? Whatever happened? 33,000, she deleted them and acid washed them, and she didn't get in trouble. Can you imagine if a Republican did that? They would want to bring back the death penalty, right? Two standards, but I think things are happening. I think. You know, I said, drain the swamp. I just never knew how deep it was. We have more garbage in the swamp than you would ever believe. And this is part of the swamp. So what happens? She said, Donald Trump didn't do well in the debates. Now, you know, remember my answer? Rosie O'Donnell, right? First question I've ever, and we took down the house. Then the second, Brett Baer, he asked me, I had to raise the hand. I'm the only one, I guess, that raised the hand, right? And the place went crazy because I was the only one telling the truth, okay? Turned out I was the only one telling. And you know, the people get it. But she said, I didn't do well on the debates. I said, really? I won every single debate. We had 15 or 14 debates, and we had the presidential debates with Crooked Hillary against myself. So here's one. I don't want to, you know, I, I am a little guilty because these are all my friends, right? A lot of them are my friends now. They weren't my friends then. They were my mortal enemy. It's hard to be friends when you're competing against somebody, right? You're right about that. So here's Donald Trump, 67. The next one was 
The next one was 5%, 4%, 3%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 1%, 1%, and zero. But here it is. All right, that's Time Magazine. All right, that's Time. They don't like me. I don't like them either, by the way. Although, actually, I do like the new owner. This year, I got beaten out by Greta. You know Greta? The last year I got beaten out, I mean, I've won it, but when the world evolves around all of us, we should be chosen. There's nothing wrong with it, right? I mean, we've won it, but we should win it every single year, let's say. And now they call it person of the year. They don't call it man of the year. And I know the women out there say, isn't that nice? But a lot of the women out there don't like it. They don't like it. We could have a woman of the year and a man of the year. I like that. Okay, here's Drudge Report. Drudge, he's starting to treat me good again. He's starting to like me again. I like him. Look, Trump. And Ted Cruz, I can say he came in second. You know, he was a great debater. And Marco came in third. And a guy who I don't like much, and they don't like him much in Ohio either, Kasich. Kasich. He was way down, way down. Okay, look. Who won? Trump? Okay. Here's another one. Look, again, a different one, Time Magazine. Trump, 33%. Ben Carson, good man, he was down. Marco, Jeb, Ted. Carly Fiorina, a name I haven't heard in a long time. What happened to Carly? And Rand, good poll. Here's the story, look. But way up, way up. Look at this. Here's another one. Look at this. Trump, 46%. I didn't make this up. Here's another one. This is a different debate. I don't know. They're all different. I want every one of them. Look, Trump, I just took these at random. 46%. Second, 5%. 3%. 5%. 3%. 9%. 5%. 11%. Trump, 46%. Here's another one. CNBC. Well, you know, the market's been up. They've actually been not so bad. And Joe Kiernan is a good guy. He is a good guy. Some of the rest I don't care for too much. Becky's like, she plays it a little bit down the middle, right? Which is okay. Trump, almost 50%. Then they have all the rest of them. 14, 4, 3, 2, 2.8, 2.54, 1.9. I'm not going to give you the names. I won't tell you that. I got 48.8. And Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush got 1.1. The rest I'm not going to talk about. But he hasn't been exactly a great supporter. You know? Sort of a never-Trumper, I guess. So Jeb, 1.9, 1.1. And Trump, 48. That's another one. Oh, here's a nice one. Here's a nice one. Look at this. Look at this. Trump, 70%. Next one is 18%. Next one is 7, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1. Trump didn't do well in the debates. See? They're fake news. Here's another one. Trump kicked ass. Trump kicked ass. Trump 48. Number two was six. Here's another one. Trump 75.6. Crooked Hillary was 24%. This was against Crooked Hillary. So look at that. Trump was 74.6. Crooked Hillary Clinton was 24.1. Trump was 80%. Crooked Hillary was 18%. And I've got this woman. You know who it is, right? If you don't, you, nobody knows her name. I'm not going to mention it. But everybody knows. Neil Cavuto, she has no credibility, and neither do you, Neil Cavuto. Here's another one. Crooked Hillary. And by the way, one is a Fox poll. 
One is Breitbart, one is a Drudge Report, one is a Patch, one is Syracuse.com, one is Pollock Opinion. Oh, that's a good one. But look at these numbers. Trump! 92! What is this? So I'm winning every poll. I beat Crooked Hillary. Here's the one. Trump 61, Crooked Hillary 39, okay? That's what it is. And then I turn on the damn show on Fox. Again, it's not the same. It was much better. It really was. It was much better. I turn on Fox, and I've got this third-rate political journalist, if you call her that, saying, Trump did very poorly in the debates, but he became president. No, I did great in the debates. I became president because of the debates, because unlike Minnie Mike, I could answer questions. And here's the final one. And I could get you another 15. These are all the ones that are taken right after. People call in hundreds of thousands of people. They call in Time Magazine, CNBC. So here's a CNBC. Crooked Hillary Clinton, 39%. Donald Trump, 61%. And then this stupid person said, I didn't debate. Well, now look, you know, I don't mind. And you can have bad debates, but I won every single debate. And then I, then I listened to this. Then three and a half, four years later, I have to listen to a person saying how we didn't do well, because these people are among the most dishonest people anywhere in the world. Take it, take it. There it is. Okay. Let's get back to business. Now I feel good. Now I feel good. She's a third-rate journalist. Let's go. We're standing up in defense of our Constitution, our freedom, and democracy itself, right? While the extreme left has been wasting America's time and doing all sorts of vile hoaxes. We went through hoaxes. We went through the impeachment scam. And by the way, Corey was with us all the way. He didn't move. He didn't budge. He said it's a lot of bull. He said it's a lot of bull. But while they're doing that stuff, and you know, we're working with the cloud. We're working with these people. They want to take you out. They want to change the results. They got caught spying. Let's say it like it is, right? They got caught spying on our election fake news. Hey, fake news, take your cameras for a change and show them the room and show them behind you. Go ahead, show them the room. Show in the room. You see, they never do it, including Fox, by the way. Fox is not that much better. We just got lucky because we have some. All their high-rated shows are the shows that like Trump. All their loser shows, like Cavuto, are the shows that don't like Trump. Uh, how is Shep Smith doing lately, by the way? How is Shep Smith? He had the lowest ratings, and now Cavuto took his place, so that's okay. But they never show the room. My wife, our great first lady, she goes, I say, I say, hi, honey. Did you watch the debate? Yeah. How did the room look? Was that, because last night, we, I think we turned away 21,000 people. We had an arena that... It held like 12, but we fill up the basketball courts, right? Or the ice rink. We had to have 15, 16,000 people. It was like on fire. You all saw it. It was great. And, and she said to me, she said, darling, how did you do? I said, I did great. I said, did you see the arena? She said, no, they never show the arena. You know? You know that guy Dana White at UFC? Well, you know, I won't tell you about him yet, but he's a brilliant guy, right? I mean, he sold his crazy fighters, I mean, bomb, bomb, bomb. Four billion dollars he got with Fertitas, great people. But you know what? They're always showing, it's full, it's full. 
these fakers back there, they don't want people. But I'll tell you what my wife said. They don't show it. But you can't imitate 15,000 people when it comes to the noise. Look, they won't show. They never show. And we've never had an empty seat from the day I came down the escalator, not one. And what these guys do, and what these guys do, if Mr. and Mrs. Jones, sitting right up there, beautiful couple, if she said, darling, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it, darling, I have to go to the bathroom. He said, darling, I'll walk with you. The cameras glung onto those seats. They glung on. And they say, there were two empty seats. Trump didn't fill up the room. These are the worst people. But when I told them to spin around those cameras, they stayed that way. Now, if we had a protester somewhere in the arena, it could be up in that corner where it's loaded up with people. Those cameras, they can do, they look like a pretzel. They look like a pretzel. They want to find if there's trouble. Those same guys, could, it could cover anything. I used to think, well, it's the equipment. It's very rigid. They can't turn it. And then some idiot from up in the corner starts screaming stupid stuff. Of course, that's dangerous in this room, to be honest. We don't have it too much. They only pick on the guys that are all by themselves and aren't fighters. But if somebody up there does something, those cameras turn around, spin around like a pretzel. They bend, boom, they get... So that was the end of my theory, that we have rigid equipment. No, and by, uh, by the way, I told them, turn around, not one of those cameras turned around to show the room. Because it's fake news. While the extreme left has been wasting America's time with vile hoaxes, We've been killing terrorists, creating jobs, raising wages, enacting fair trade deals, securing our border, and lifting up citizens of every race, color, religion, and creed, right? We added another 225,000 brand new beautiful jobs last month, way, way, way above what our great geniuses back there thought it would be, 225,000. Think of it. We right now have more people working in our country than at any time in the history of our country. Almost 160 million people. And right now, since the election, we go by the election, don't forget, a lot of things happened when we won. From the day we won that beautiful November day, the most exciting night in the history of television, including UFC fights, including UFC fights. The most exciting night, the biggest ratings in the history of television worldwide. They were watching, I, was, I have friends in Paris and London. What are you doing? I'm watching, you know, three in the morning, two in the morning, five in the morning. They're watching, the whole world was watching. That was the most exciting television that anybody's ever said. Even ESPN, some guy on ESPN said, this is the most exciting event I've ever seen. And all he does is watch sporting events and big ones. But since the election, since the election, seven million brand new beautiful jobs have been added. And we've invested more than $2 trillion into that military that we talked about, and we created something that's very exciting, and we have our great new general. He's on the, he's on our, I'll tell you, he was on a list of the most incredible men you've ever seen. The sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces, the Space Force. And I will be making a big decision for the Space Force as to where it's going to be located, and I know you want it. We'll be making that decision toward the end of the year. I, you know, I was here, I did, I did your, 
I met — I was up at the uh, Air Force Academy, and I did — I greeted those kids. They were so great. I did the commencement address. Was anybody there? I did the commencement address. And the general said, sir, would you like to shake hands with the cadets? I said, does everyone else do it, President? Oh, yes, sir. What he didn't say is they'll shake 10 hands. I said, so they do. How many do you have? Sir, we have 1,156 cadets. I said, you mean other people do it? Yes, sir. But they don't do 1,156. They'll do 30, 40. They'll take the top 10 out of the class. I said, I'll do it. I stood there for two and a half hours, and the sun was blazing. True. And I shook 1,156 hands. And you know, a lot of these kids are very strong physically. In fact, you have one of them as an example. Uh, he was the winner of the Home Run Derby. Did you know that? College — think of that. The College Home Run Derby. I said, let me see you. I want to see what you look like. He stands up, uniform, everything else. And by the way, I did something for Air Force, but I did something for all of the academies. If you were a great athlete and they had a hard time recruiting, although they've done well, if you're a great athlete, you can't — you know, we wanted to sort of get them to go, but they didn't because they didn't want to serve five years in the military, and then they'd go into the NFL or baseball. So I had one of the teams in. They said, sir, give us the waiver, sir. They've been after the waiver. You know what the waiver is? That means that if you're a great athlete, you can go to the Air Force Academy or Army, Navy, the Coast Guard. You can do — you can go to one of our service academies. I did the rule, and we got it through Congress. And you don't have to serve. You go directly into the major leagues, into the NFL, and you serve your time after when you get out. Isn't that correct? And the Army coach, who's a great guy — all great guys — Navy coach, the Army coach — said, sir, if you do that, we can compete with anybody, because we lost a lot of great athletes who said, you know, we just can't do that. Now they serve their time afterwards. Isn't that great? And we did it. They've been trying to get that for so many years. But I love that — I love that group of people. I saw this guy from the Home Run Derby, and I shook hands. Oh, I shook hands. And they come up, and they're strong people. And they're shaking, and they're a little excited. You know, they're a little nervous, maybe. They're meeting the president. They're a little nervous, and they're strong. They got big, strong hands, and they're saying — and I'm saying, you know, hello. Sir, thank you. Man. I say, jeez. What are you doing? I'm captain of my wrestling team, sir. I admire you greatly, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I'm trying to act like it doesn't hurt. <laughs> By the end of the day, I'm going to like, But we did it. And then I said, I said, I said, wait a minute. I said, General, no other president could do that. The presidents don't do that. He said, no, they do, sir, but they stop usually at around 50. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but I love the Air Force Academy, and you have all of the infrastructure, so you're being very strongly considered for the Space Command. So, very strong. And actually, I have to say this. I think I can say this, Mr. Senator, but the governor showed up at the plane today, your governor. Democrat. No. No, but in all fairness, he showed up because he wanted to lobby to see if they could get it. That's okay. That's all right. And we are going to be making that decision, Corey, when we make that decision, all right? Okay. But we've destroyed the ISIS territorial caliphate 100 percent. We killed the founder and leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. He's dead. He's dead. And we just killed the world's number one terrorist, Qasim Soleimani, ending his evil reign of terror forever, forever and ever.
He was the king of the roadside bomb, right? You know, when you see these young men, and in some cases women, no legs, no arms, they get it. And 92 percent of them were from Salamani. And then they started making them. They had great detection. We had these guys, great detection. Then all of a sudden, the detection wasn't working because they started making them out of plastic instead of metal. So they're blowing the guys up with the, with the uh, scopes. So they had the scopes on. And that happened recently because they started making it out of plastic. Real scum. But he's gone. He's evil. He's dead. And America is respected again like never before. But as we keep on winning, Washington Democrats keep on losing their minds. They've gone nuts. That's why millions of registered Democrats, voters, people that were with the Democrats for a long time, they're leaving their party to join our movement. They're joining our great Republican Party. We have more enthusiasm than any party's had in the last 50 years. And don't believe stories, and don't believe polls, because the polls are worse than the stories. They give phony polls. I got a call two weeks ago. The great state of Texas, they love me and I love them. Remember Beto? Remember? I was born for this. I was born. I said, any guy that says that, they got problems. Well, he had problems. So he's from Texas. He had a little problem. He came out against oil and gas, the Bible, and guns. Abraham Lincoln couldn't win Texas if you're against. Think of it. So he's against religion, he's against guns, and he's against oil. Somehow, that doesn't play. But they had, listen to this one, because this happened four years ago, you remember? Donald Trump is in trouble in Texas. I don't think so. I don't think so. And then they announced tonight, right? Eight o'clock, the polls have closed. And you know, they only announce very, if you're really gonna win by a lot, otherwise it takes all night. The polls have closed in the great state of Texas. Donald Trump has won the great state of Texas. But they had Alfred E. Newman, Buttigieg, little Buttigieg. I said, I've had you up to here. They had little Buttigieg leading Donald Trump in Texas, these people. But very close. He said, it's too close to call. This is a poll. We're Buttigieg. So a friend of mine from Texas, a big, powerful, strong guy, real Texas, he's got the cowboy hat. I'd love to wear that hat. I wouldn't have to comb my hair so much. I wouldn't need hairspray, right? I'd love those Texas hats. I don't know if we get away with it in Washington. That's my only problem. But I love him. This guy wears that big hat, the biggest hat. He's a big guy. And he's, he's interviewed by somebody who said, listen, I don't know much about politics, but I can tell you one thing. Buttigieg is not tied with the president. The president is leading him, like, by 20 points. It's like I said the last time. Nobody's leading Trump in Texas. And you know what? Nobody is even close to us in the great state of Colorado. We're leading Trump. Nobody. With your energy and enthusiasm, this November, and specifically, it's November 3rd is the big day. And this is going to be as big, and I can't say bigger, because what was bigger than that? They came from the hills, they came from the mountains, they came out of the rivers. They came all over the place. Great people, they just never saw anybody they wanted to vote for. Women would come in, they hadn't voted in 20 years. Great women, beautiful women, strong women, smart women, wives. No, no, incredible. And they love our country. They work hard and they pay their taxes and they work and they're, you know, we're the elite, just so you know. They're not the elite, we're the elite. And you know what? They'd show up 
They got Trump bandanas along with our great Vice President Mike Pence. Trump Pence. And they got the hats now and they walk it. These are people that were never political people. They never wore a pin. Now they got 30 pins all over the chest. They've got the hats with the things and the Trump. And nobody's ever seen anything like it. It's really, it's a great revolution. And we're turning this country around. And I'm not saying anything can ever compete with 2016, but I think if we don't do it, a lot of what we've done, and we're going to go over the jobs and the regulation cuts and what we've done for the vets with choice and accountability. But you know what? They can undo it. But in four years, they can't undo it because that tree will be planted. It'll be solid. They're not going to be able to do it. So we got to win. And your Second Amendment is at stake. Remember that. So this November, we're going to take back the House, we're going to hold the Senate, and we are going to keep the White House. So we're thrilled tonight to be joined by many great leaders from across this incredible state and from all over the country. And I want to thank Mike Pence. I heard he gave a great speech. I never wanted to be too good. I never wanted to be too good. I said, Mike, take it easy. <laughs> Can't be too good. Mike is great. But we have Secretary David Bernhardt, Department of Interior. Thank you. Come on up, Dave. He's great. What he's doing, by the way, he's the largest landlord by a factor of about 2,000. Department of the Interior, you're taking good care of Colorado, please? Okay. He's, he's a big deal in Colorado, right? He's a big deal. All those beautiful mountains and rivers and lakes. He's the guy. You better keep him nice and clean. Believe me, we like the environment more than anybody. We want clean water and we want clean air. And you have warriors. You had guys, they fought for us. 197 to nothing. We were one to think of it. Republicans, 197 on the House to nothing. Congressman Ken Buck, come on up. Congressman Scott Tipton. And Congressman Doug Lamborn. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. And we're also joined tonight by somebody that you really love. I mean, you, and I love him too, but there's a reason he's my son, Don Jr. And Kimberly Guilfoyle. Kimberly, thank you. Kimberly. And a man. He happens to own the Chicago Cubs, but that's okay. He's done an incredible job, actually. He had a five-year plan. On the fifth year, the stadium was fully rebuilt, and they won the World Series. That's not bad, right? He had a five-year plan. <laughs> RNC Finance Chairman Todd Ricketts. Come on up, Todd. Come on up. Come on up, Todd. And I mentioned him a little earlier, but you didn't know he was here. I just said, you know, he's a champion. He's a winner. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. He's a tough cookie. He's the kind of people that made our country great, truly. They made our country great. He started off with two people fighting each other. Then he got four people fighting each other. Then he got them fighting each other, each other. Then he got six and eight and 12. All of a sudden, people started watching and looking. And I was proud to hold his first event. That's why he loves me. I fought. They didn't want, they said it's too dangerous. Nobody would take it. I'm the only one who said, take it. We'll take it. And it was unbelievable. I went and I said, this is great. Let's do it again. And he has been my friend for a long time. And they put together a phenomenal deal. It's called UFC. He's the UFC president. And they just sold the company. 
He started it off for about $30, and they just sold it for $4 billion. And the people that bought it said, we're not buying it unless Dana White stays back and runs it. So Dana White, come on up. He's now a very wealthy guy. Come here. What's up, Colorado? How are you today? So, I'm not a very political person, I'll start there. But let me say this, there's things that I can tell you about the President of the United States that you don't hear on TV and you don't hear from other people. Like you said, I've known this man for 20 years. We've actually become even closer since he's become the President of the United States. When somebody becomes the President of the United States, you don't ever expect to hear from them again, okay? And I understand it. It absolutely makes sense. This guy is so loyal and such a good friend. Every time I see him, I saw him today, when I met him on Air Force One, the first thing he, had, he said to me is, how is your family? How is your family? Good man, very loyal and a very good friend. I see a lot of things from Mr. Trump that the public doesn't see. And the people who surround me every day see how this man treats me as a friend and other people he's friends with. He's a fighter, he loves this country. He's doing great things for this country and we gotta win this election again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Is beautiful because you know we get tired of hearing from these politicians all the time right politicians right what a job he does and we thank you very much dan and you are my great friend and thank you so i want to bring up a man who's going to win the election with us and really he has been he's been so rock solid you know there were stories will he because we're doing great in the state we're doing great and you know your second amendment you like the second amendment it's under siege. But with Corey and with me, they're not going to play with your Second Amendment. Not going to happen. But it's, it is under siege. You see what's happening. But somebody, we fight together, and he's been so great. Corey Gardner, please come on up. Please. to give a great big Pikes Peak welcome to the President of the United States. Now, now I think they heard you on Pikes Peak, but they didn't hear you on Mount Garfield. Give him another round of applause. Colorado, we are going to win. We are going to win because we believe in Colorado. We are going to win because we believe in America. We are going to win because we will fight against the socialist tides across this country. The Democrats are trying, but they're not going to win. Look, there was a, there was a dangerous thing that happened in 2016. It was the normalization of socialism by Bernie Sanders. The most dangerous thing was the normalization of socialism by Bernie Sanders because what happened? Candidates started running as socialists. They embraced the platform. And today, there aren't shades of socialism. They are running to the left on a socialist platform. They want to take our guns. They want to take our health care. That's their platform. What they say they will do. 
Colorado, are we going to let it happen? No. We will not. Mr. President, you've done so much good for Colorado. As a result of your work, the Bureau of Land Management is now headquartered in the great state of Colorado. United States Space Command and Space Force are operating out of Colorado Springs. And just a few miles to the south, a few miles to the south, please understand how big this is. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy went to Pueblo, Colorado, and he talked about building a pipeline in Pueblo, Colorado. Was it built? We got the money two weeks ago to begin construction, thanks to President Donald Trump. Thank you. Thank you. Colorado, Dana White is here. What does it take to win a cage fight? We need a fighter. And in Colorado, we are going to fight for this country. We're going to fight for the White House. We're going to fight to maintain a Senate majority because we need to continue the great work of freedom in this country. Colorado, make us proud, stand strong, and together we will win. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. That's true, the pipeline. Long time they've been trying. We got it right away, and we'll be announcing something very big toward the end of the year. Corey is a champion for the people of Colorado. He loves your state. Look, he loves your state. He was here. He does the tractor thing. He loves tractors. He sells a certain type. And uh, don't worry, if there's, if there's any noise, just let him. They won't hear us. And he's got my complete and total support and endorsement. He will never let you down. That was quick. That was quick. She goes home to mom, and mom loves us. You know, her mother's a big supporter. She said, was that you in that big stadium? I'm not liking it. She's going to have a lot of trouble at home with mom and dad. Together, we're building the world's most prosperous economy. And what we've done in the last three years, they said, was absolutely impossible to do. We've created nearly 180,000 new jobs right here in Colorado. Nobody would have thought that. Including, including 25,000 new manufacturing and construction jobs. Remember they said, you can't do manufacturing jobs anymore, really? Tell me about it. Unemployment has reached the lowest rate in over one half a century. The average unemployment rate, this is a beauty, for my administration is the lowest for any United States president in the history of our country. That's not a bad one. The unemployment rate among African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Asian Americans has reached the lowest levels ever recorded. And for women, 71 years, and soon you're going to be hitting the historic number. 71 years, the best numbers in 71 years. African-American and Hispanic-American poverty has plummeted to the lowest rates ever recorded. The unemployment rate for women is going, and I'm telling you, within a very short period of time, you're going to see some statistics coming out on one statistics. I got to do it right. Otherwise, they'll say, what's wrong? <laughs> you know, if you go 16 of these, and if you mispronounce one word, they say, what's wrong? <laughs> statistics. 
for women that are going to be unbelievable. They're going to be unbelievable. The best ever. The veterans' unemployment rate dropped to a record low. Workers without a high school diploma have achieved the lowest unemployment rate ever recorded in U.S. history. Half a million more Hispanic Americans now own a home. We've lifted 10 million people off of welfare, and median household income is now at the highest level in the history of our country. Think of that. Think of this. To lift up forgotten communities that need investment the most, we created with Tim Scott, great guy, great senator from South Carolina, Opportunity Zones. Jobs and investment are now pouring into over 125 newly designated Opportunity Zones right here in Colorado. You know about that, right? It's been amazing. Opportunity Zones are amazing what's happened. We're supporting working families by fighting for paid family leave and getting it reducing the cost of child care and giving 40 million American families an average of $2,200 in their pockets directly, thanks to the Republican child tax credit. People don't know that. Our historic regulatory reduction campaign is ending the tyranny of Washington bureaucrats we repealed the ridiculous waters of the United States rule, which was basically taking away your property. And we are taking the Bureau of Land Management out of Washington, D.C. We've just done it. And thank you very much, Secretary Bernhardt, just up here. Nice, slim, beautiful-looking man. He looks beautiful. When you work with him, he's beautiful because he gets it done. And you're moving it, and it's headquarters to Grand Junction, Colorado, because we believe that the people who manage the lands of the great American West should live right here in the great American West, right? And we have ended the war in American energy. There was a war. And we're up here, and we're doing it. We are right now energy independent. Can you believe it? They want to use wind, 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 blow, wind. Please, please, please blow. Please, please keep the birds away from those windmills, please. Tell those beautiful bald egos, no, no, a bald eagle. You know, if you shoot a bald eagle, they put you in jail for a long time. But the windmills knock them out like crazy. It's true. And I think they have a rule, after a certain number are killed, you have to close down the windmill until the following year. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? And they're all made in China and in Germany, Siemens. And for those of you that want to hear it, when they're making them, more stuff goes up into the air and up into the ozone, the atmosphere. More stuff is going up there. They're making it. Ay, ay, ay. And they don't say this, but, you know, after a period of time, they get tired, they get old, they get rusty. And a lot of the guys say, hey, their useful life is gone. Let's get the hell out of here. And they're all over the place. You look at Palm Springs, California. Take a look. Palm Springs. They're all over the place. They're closed. They're rotting. They look like hell. Every major Democrat running for president wants to entirely eliminate. American production of oil and natural gas, crushing Colorado's economy, destroying tens of thousands of Colorado energy jobs, and demolishing property values all across the state. They're doing that. Look, you're going to vote for one of these people, probably Crazy Bernie. He seems to be leading. Mini Mike, I thought he might come up, but he can't because he can't debate. He wasn't meant for the camera, do we agree? He wasn't exactly great last night. No, I think you lost two last night. <laughs> Only in Colorado could somebody say it. No, you're going to probably, it looks like Bernie, doesn't it? It looks like crazy Bernie. 
Crazy Bernie's not big into natural gas and oil and the things that keep our great factories and plants going, right? But Colorado voters will never let it happen. We're reversing decades of calamitous trade policies. America lost one in four manufacturing jobs following the twin disasters of NAFTA and China's entrance into the WTO. But under this administration, all of that is changing. The era of economic surrender is over. Thank you. It's over. Last month, we ended the NAFTA catastrophe, and I signed the brand-new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement into law. Incredible deal. The USMCA is a gigantic victory for farmers, ranchers, and manufacturers all across the great state of Colorado and every other state. Also, you know, something we got that people don't talk about, if you love your children, you don't have to pay estate taxes on your beautiful small farms and businesses. If you love your children, it's great. And if you don't love your children, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Who the hell knows? If you don't love them, don't leave. Don't leave that beautiful farm to your children. Give it to somebody else, okay? If they don't treat you well, don't leave them a damn thing. Are you listening, Donnie? Are you listening, Donnie? I also took — no, it is true. That's a big deal. You know, farmers were leaving their ranch and their farms and their — people were leaving their small businesses to their family, and they were being assessed and valued much higher in many cases than it was worth. You couldn't do it. They'd go out — your kids would go out and borrow a lot of money. They'd end up losing their business, losing your farm that was in your family for 150 years. You know what happens. And they're good kids, and maybe they'll never be you. They can't farm like you, and maybe they can't, and maybe they can. Maybe they're better. But you know what? They'd go out and they'd borrow a lot of money, and they'd lose the farms. The number is staggering. We got rid of it. No more death tax. No more inheritance tax. And I also took the strongest ever action to confront China's massive theft of American jobs. What they've done to us over the years, we were losing 200 billion, 300, 400, 500 — not — not million, billion, billion, not million. You know, 500 million would be a lot, right? We're talking about 500 billion. They were taking it. Our strategy worked. We put tariffs up 25 percent on the first 250 billion. Billions of dollars poured into the United States. They devalued their currency, and they pumped money in. We didn't pay for it, despite the fact that these guys, they like to say they did. We didn't pay for it. And I'll tell you what, China came to the table, and we made a deal that's great for us, and hopefully it's great for them. And last month, as you know, we signed a groundbreaking trade agreement with China that will defend our workers, protect our intellectual property, and boost American exports. $250 billion worth of purchases, $50 billion worth of farm agricultural purchases. $50 billion. You know, the most they ever purchased was $16 billion, right? You know that story. I've told it a couple of times. $16 billion was the most ever. You know, Secretary Sonny Perdue, agriculture, has done a great job. I said, who's the most? What's the biggest year? $16 billion, sir. And I said, all right, make it 20. So they agreed on 20, so now we're getting ready to close the deal. Biggest trade deal ever made. There's never been biggest deal ever made. We're getting ready to close the deal between that and USMCA, right? We're getting ready to close it. I go over, I say, what do you have down for the farmers? They've been great, although I have been helping you. I gave you a lot of money. I gave you a lot of money. 16 billion one year, 12 billion from the year before. I took it out of the tariffs, so we had a lot left over. But think of it. But I said, so tell me, fellas, let me ask you, what do we have? What's the number? 20 billion, sir. They're going to purchase 20 billion worth of farm products. I said, make it 50. Tell them to make it 50. So we went to China, and they were great. You know, they got 1.5 billion people, right? Got a lot of feeding to do. And I said, do me a favor. Instead of 20 billion purchased from our farmers, would you make it 50? No, 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 no. 
and they agreed to do it. They agreed to do it. I don't think you're going to be able to make it. You better be able to make it. I don't want the farmers coming to me, sir. Sir, I'm sorry. We can't produce that much, sir. I said, our farmers will find a way. They'll go out and buy larger tractors, and they'll buy some extra land, right? Go out and buy a bigger tractor or something. No, but it is true. I've had people say, sir, they can't produce that much. I said, forget it. They will. Look at them. You're a farmer. They'll, do, they'll figure that one out. Although Mike Bloomberg said you'll never figure it out, right? And they'll figure it out. Long before him. You'll figure that one out long before him. No, I know the farmers. I'm not worried about it. $50 billion or no issue have Washington Democrats more thoroughly sold out the American people than on immigration, right? Every day, Democrats' open border policies are harming and killing innocent lives. In this region alone, last year, ICE officers arrested over 2,000. And by the way, our ICE officers, these guys are tough and they're brave. Over 2,000 criminal aliens. That's MS-13 gangs, thousands, and they bring them back to where they came from. And by the way, now their countries take them back. They weren't taking them back. Safe third agreements, right? They take them back. Charge or convicted of dangerous offenses, including robbery, rape, and murder. We bring them back, and in some cases, we don't even want to bring them back. We have to put them. I don't want to house them for the next 50 years. But you know what? We don't want to take chances either. But we'll bring them back to Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico. We bring them back. They didn't used to take them. They said, we don't want them back. Oh, okay, we'll keep them ourselves. We don't do that anymore. In Denver, an illegal alien was recently charged with brutally stabbing a judge multiple times, attempting to murder him in his own home. The alien had been arrested 36 times over the past 20 years. Other than that, other than that, he was a very fine fellow. For crimes including assault and child abuse, yet somehow, they kept letting him go, and he was still in our country. In communities across the nation, radical, and we're watching them very closely, left-wing politicians are imposing deadly sanctuary cities and sanctuary states, and policies that compel local law enforcement to release these illegal aliens straight into your beautiful communities. Last year, Colorado Democrats enacted a law declaring this entire state to be a sanctuary for dangerous criminal aliens. As a result of state and local sanctuary policies, officials in Boulder defied federal law enforcement and released a previously deported child molester into the community. In Denver, officials released a criminal alien arrested on felony drug charges, and now he is a very dangerous man. We just caught him for attempted murder. And right here in Colorado Springs, El Paso County, officials defied the request of federal law enforcement and released a criminal alien arrested for robbery, assault, and kidnapping. They released him straight into your community. These are the Democrats. These are your Democrats. Democrats think that Colorado should be a haven for murderers, predators, kidnappers, and felons in our country, and that come in illegally. Republicans believe that Colorado should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not criminal aliens. If you want to shut down sanctuary cities and stop sanctuary states, if you want to protect your family and your loved ones, you must vote for Corey, vote for Trump, vote for the Republican Party. We're getting it done.
Thank you very much. And thanks to our tireless efforts to secure the border, we've reduced illegal border crossings for eight straight months in a row. Illegal crossings are down 75 percent since last spring, and we have ended the horrible practice of catch and release. You know what you do? You catch them. You say, where do you live? They don't live. You don't have an address. Where do you live? Give us your address. They don't have an address. Many are criminals. Many are very dangerous criminals. So they're saying, and we are building, the wall has gone up 122 miles as of yesterday. And it's a serious wall. You know, did you hear? Two weeks ago, a small section, like twice the size of this stage, we were putting it up, and they're pouring the concrete. And, you know, it's like a lot of it's, it's Mexico. It's very rough territory, some of it. It's partially desert. We were in a rough area, very windy. And we had a tremendous sand and windstorm. So we hadn't put it in. We put it in, and it was just getting set. And we got hit with, like, a tornado of wind. And it blew it down. And the fake news said, Trump's wall fell down. It was blown down. <laughs> but see, at least we have a voice where we can explain. It's true. And we lifted it up, and we held it up. And when the storm went by, we had it set. And it set beautifully. And the following day, that sucker is going to be up for many, many years. Can you imagine? I said, what happened in a certain area? And we're doing a great job, by the way, in New Mexico. New Mexico is going to be a great, great state for the Republican Party. And Arizona, what we're doing on the border in Arizona. They want us to do it badly. But can you imagine that? A thing falls over because the concrete was just poured. It's soaking wet. And it falls over. And they make it sound like the wall fell down. These are very, very dishonest people, but you know that. Border Patrol has seized the largest amount of deadly narcotics over the last year ever recorded. It's horrible what's happening. The largest amount ever recorded. We've deported record numbers of gang members, especially the MS-13 gang members, but there are others that are just as bad. And we've done more to secure the border than any administration in the history of our country. The border is going to be very soon secured. We'll have, sometime next year, over 500 miles of beautiful, powerful wall built. Washington Democrats have never been more extreme. Taking cues from crazy Bernie Sanders, 132 congressional Democrats have signed up for Bernie's health care takeover that would strip 180 million Americans of their great private coverage that you want. <laughs> While the Socialist Democrats are trying to destroy American health care and trying to destroy your Social Security, that won't happen with me, my administration is protecting your Social Security, your Medicare, and is fighting to give you great, great health care. Already done a good job. We're defending your right to keep the doctor and to keep the plan of your choice. Remember President Obama 28 times, he said, Keep your doctor, keep your plan. Keep your doctor, keep your plan. Keep your doctor, keep your plan, right? It was a lie. We should impeach him. We should impeach him. <laughs> impeach Obama. Get him out of office. No, nobody thought of that. We caught him in a lie. 28 times at least, he's on record. We caught him in a lie, but nobody said, let's impeach him. Only these maniacs, crazy Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Crying Chuck Schumer. And what about little pencil neck, right? Pencil neck. He's got the world's smallest neck. Here's a guy that lied about my statement. He made up a statement, and he, 
He delivered it before contract. He made up a statement. It was totally fiction. He made it up. And then they tell me, you know, you're getting ready to sue him, and they say, oh, no, he's protected because he made the statement in the halls of Congress. That should be worse, you know? That should be worse. A little wise guy. We're making health care better and much cheaper while premiums more than doubled in the five years before I took office. We're now offering plans that are up to 60 percent less expensive, and they're better. They're better. We're protecting people with pre-existing conditions, and we always will. We're fighting to stop surprise medical building. I signed an executive order imposing price transparency. That's going to be bigger than health care in a certain way. Watch the prices come down. Because when providers are required to show their prices, those same prices fall very, very fast. We have approved a record number of affordable new generic drugs, which are just as good as the name brand drugs, but at a tiny fraction of the cost. We have totally transformed veterans health care, including getting the long sought VA choice and VA accountability. So now, if our veterans have to wait online, they go out to a doctor, a local doctor. We pay the bill, and they're all set. They don't have to wait for six weeks. Right? He's agreeing, right? Good, right? You don't see those stories. You know, you used to see all these horrible vet stories, right? Veterans, the veterans on television. And you don't see it because Veterans Choice, it's amazing. You go out, our great veterans, here's a man right here. You're saying yes, right? Purple Heart! Thank you. Thank you. That's great. But it's a lot different under Trump, isn't it, huh? A lot different under Trump. And now you go out to a private doctor. But, you know, we also got accountability. They've been trying to get these th things done for 45, 46, 48 years. Couldn't get them done. I'm good at getting things approved, I have to say. But, but we also got accountability where we can fire people that aren't taking care of our vets. If somebody isn't doing a good job, you couldn't fire them. Now you look at them and you say, get the hell out of here, you're fired. And we passed another thing. For 44 years, they've been trying to get it passed, the spectacular right to try, where we can use our medicines that are in trial if somebody is terminally ill or very sick. We can use it, and we are having tremendous results. Right to try. I hope that nobody in this room needs it. I hope you don't need it, but if you do, we have the best in the world, and we're seeing amazing results. We're combating the opioid epidemic. Drug overdose deaths have declined for the first time in nearly 31 years. And we are pursuing new advances in neonatal research to care for America's youngest patients and breaking all records in so doing. All of the radical Democrats in the presidential debates have declared their unlimited support for extreme late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from the mother's womb right up until the very moment of birth. You know that. That is why, at my State of the Union, I asked Congress to prohibit late-term abortion for babies. Because Republicans believe that every child is a sacred gift from God. The Democrat Party is the party of high taxes, high crime, open borders, late-term abortion, socialism, blatant corruption, and the total obliteration of your Second Amendment. That's what it is. The Republican Party is the party of the American worker, the American family, the American dream, and the late great Abraham Lincoln. People forget that. 
People forget Honest Abe. He's the most presidential guy, right? I've always said I could be more presidential than anybody, but I'm not sure I could beat Honest Abe when he wears the hat. That hat is too much. It's so easy to be presidential, so easy. It's so much easier than doing what I have to do. But you know what I'd have? I'd have about three people in the front row. How about Sleepy Joe? How about his performance? What? What? It's great to be. It's great to be with the great people of Ohio. Joe, Joe, you're in Iowa. You're in Iowa. Oh, uh, he did it five times. So far, I've never done it, thank you. I've never done it. If I do it, that's a bad sign. No, he does it all the time, right? He was in New Hampshire, and he said uh, he was in Vermont. It's great to be in Vermont. Joe, you're in New Hampshire, damn it. He go up and tell him again, again. Joe, what the hell is wrong with you, Joe? Sleepy Joe. He's Sleepy Joe. He was sleepy a long time ago, but now he's really sleepy. But it's easy to be presidential, right? You know that. The easiest thing you can do is presidential. Never open your jacket. Never. It's got to be buttoned up. All right? All right? Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. It's so great to be with the people of Colorado. So good. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. No, no, it's so easy. You know, it's like so easy, honestly. You get, look, I did very well with the State of the Union, right? They said it was one of the best. Smart. Smart. Ah, smart, you know, smart guy. We do good. We're representing you. I better do good. If I didn't do good, you'd dump me so fast. Actually, I don't think you would dump me so fast. Actually, you want to know the thing? I don't think she said, we're never dumping you. Fake news, CNN went up to a uh, woman. What does it take for you to leave the president? I'm not leaving him. There were 10 women. The one woman, beautiful, like incredible women. And they had their bandanas, they had hats, Trump. And stupid CNN, they go up, what does it take for you? And then he goes, look, he said one time that his people are so good, they'd stay with him if he shot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue. Do you remember, right? Would you stay if he shot somebody? They actually, this is actually an answer, something to the effect. Would you stay if he shot somebody in the middle of Fifth Avenue? And the woman looks, well, it depends why he shot him. I thought that was depends. Makes sense. Right? Depends why he shot him. But then they said, we're not leaving him. We're never leaving him. We're in this thing together, folks. We got the swamp. We got that dirty, rotten swamp. We got crooked politicians. We got a lot of bad people, but we're getting them out one by one. We better be. Like little Adam Schiff. That little Adam Schiff. What a crooked politician. He's a corrupt politician. Talking about guys, he'll lie, and then the next day, get caught. He'll be sorry that he got caught. The next day, he'll walk up to the mic and say exactly the same thing. He's got no shame. He's got no shame. Yeah, he's a liar. He's, he's a bad, he's actually, I think he's a sick person. Republicans are fighting for the citizens from every background, every community, and every walk of life. You know that. We're the party of boundless optimism, excitement, energy, and enthusiasm. We are asking all Americans to join our incredible movement. We are the big tent. We are the big party. We have the big ideas for the future. Republicans are fighting for school choice. Big deal. It's a big deal. Because no parent should ever be forced to send their child to a failing government school to uphold the new rule of law. We have confirmed 217 brand new, beautiful federal judges who will interpret 
the Constitution as written. That's a record. That is a record, and it includes 192 judges who are appointed for a lifetime. So think of it. If they're 40 years old, if they're 45 years old, they could be there for 40, 50 years. As you know, and by the way, that's a record by a lot. I have the record, but there's one record that probably nobody will get, the percentage record. Who has the percentage, you know? George Washington, 100 percent. But it was only 16 people. So with 217, can you imagine that? It's a record. And we're going up. We're going up. The Democrats are thrilled about that one. And as you know, I have nominated and we have confirmed two great new Supreme Court justices. Colorado's own new, right? Colorado. That's right. Colorado's own Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Neil Gorsuch. That's right, Colorado. He's a great guy, too. Great guy. Colorado, that's a big thing. That's another great check you have down for Colorado. Neil Gorsuch. I recognized Israel's true capital and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. They said they were going to do it for years. We recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Our investments in the United States military include more than $300 million. This year, has anyone ever heard of a place called Fort Carson? Yeah. Another place, Peterson Air Force Base, you know that. Another place, the Air Force Academy, you know that. And Shriver, right. Air Force Base, Shriver. Shriver! Was that right? Shriver, right? Shriver, that's a little tricky one. That's why it took me a little while. I'm looking at that sucker. I'm saying Shriver, right? Thank you. That's very nice. He saw, he saw he was having a little trouble with that one. That's tricky. You don't like to mispronounce a word like you come to a great place like this. And instead of calling it Fort Carson, you call it Fort Crasson. And they say, oh, this guy doesn't know anything about us. Now, a lot of money going into Fort Carson. It's great. For years, you watched as your politicians apologized for America. You saw that? Oh, it's like to apologize. We don't apologize. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. And we are standing up for the great people of Colorado. At stake in our present battle is the survival of our nation. If you want your children to inherit the blessings that generations of Americans have fought and died for, they wanted to secure these great rights that we all have, then we must devote everything we have toward victory in November of 2020, November 3rd. <laughs> Only this way can we save the America we love, and drain the Washington swamp once and for all. We'll get it finished. We'll get it finished. They're bad people. They're all over the place. They're bad people. With your help, we will lift millions more of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. You know that. Right? Together, we will elect a Republican Congress to create a fair, safe, sane, and lawful system of immigration. We will continue to enact great new trade deals like we've been doing. I'm going to India next week, and we're talking trade. They've been hitting us very hard for many, many years, but I really like Prime Minister Modi. we got to talk a little we got to talk a little business. It's, it's, they've been hitting us hard. They give us tariffs. One of the highest in the world is India. But I hear they're going to have 10 million people. They say anywhere from 
Six to 10 million people are going to be showing up along the route to one of the largest stadiums in the world, the largest cricket stadium in the world, which is brand new and beautiful. But you know what? And the only problem with doing that, Prime Minister Modi said, we will have 10 million people greet you. Here's my problem. We have a packed house. We have a lot of people, thousands of people that couldn't get in. It's going to look like peanuts from now on. I'll never be satisfied with the crowd if we have 10 million people in India. How can I be satisfied if we fill up like a 60,000 seat stadium? Big deal. I'll be, see, I'm getting spoiled. Well, he said, build a bigger stadium. That's a good one. That's a good one. Colorado, very good. But it's going to result in more products proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA, right? Right, that beautiful phrase. We will achieve new breakthroughs in science and medicine, finding new cures for childhood cancer. They've made such progress. And ending the AIDS epidemic in America. We started a year ago. It should have been started long before in the last administration because they had the technology then. They didn't start it. But we're starting it. We'll have it done within nine years. It's a 10-year process. Think of that AIDS. We will land the first woman on the moon and become the first nation in the world to plant our flag on Mars. And you have a lot of that action happening right here. We will defend privacy, free speech, religious liberty, and the right to keep and bear arms. Above all, we will never stop fighting for the sacred values that bind us together as one beautiful America. We support, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. We stand with the incredible heroes of law enforcement. We believe in the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We believe that faith and family, not government bureaucracy, are the true American way. We believe that children should be taught to love our country, honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. And we live by the words of our national motto, in God we trust. From Pueblo to Fort Collins, from Denver to Durango, from Black Forest to Broomfield, from Castle Rock to right here in Colorado Springs, We stand on the shoulders of red-blooded American patriots who poured out their heart and sweat and soul to secure our liberty and defend our freedom. Colorado was founded by pioneers and prospectors, cowboys and miners and ranchers who tamed the wilderness, explored the West, scaled the Rockies, fought the battles, and helped make this the greatest nation ever to exist on the face of the earth. And we are making it greater every single day, greater than ever before. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning.
We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. America is thriving like never before. And ladies and gentlemen of Colorado, the best is yet to come. Together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, people of Colorado.